cool if I open this video with a bit of a story. It's a personal one I'm not necessarily proud of, but I know it'll fit and set the tone for this video. Rewinds, in my mid-20s, I was touring all around the world, got my dream gig as a professional drummer. It was punk rock and rock and roll. I kept it pretty clean though. We'd be out for a month, two months, sometimes three, four different countries, and I'd get home to my little two-bedroom Seattle apartment I was paying $700 a month for. So stressed out, burnt out, and navigating breakups all at the same time. To manage the stress, I picked up the not so healthy habit, vaping. Those little like jewel USB sticks. In rock and roll, people are smoking cigarettes nonstop. I was like, no, 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 no cigarettes. But apparently inhaling 2000 chemicals made in China, sign me up. Long story short, it got out of hand. And when I added it up, I was inhaling about two packs of cigarettes a day. Till one day I was about to leave for another tour. And I remember getting to the SeaTac airport, checking in, getting through security, and it was gonna be a six hour flight, which is pretty long. And I was freaking out because I couldn't smoke that little e-cig on the plane. And so what I did is I snuck into the airport bathroom. They're public, you don't have to sneak in, but I was being sneaky. Go into one of the stalls and puff my little, my little vape pen, and right next to me there was a guy taking a massive and it was just, <laughs> the bathroom smelled like an airport bathroom. And I was in, I was just like, this is disgusting. As I was walking out of the airport, I threw away the electronic cigarettes. I quit right then and there. And I haven't looked back since. Why I'm telling you this story, and when I look back on that, you know, years and years later, there's a deeper hidden reason. In it lies all of habit change, all of self-development. A reason that for you won't require any willpower is not just another tactic that you forget about in a month. What I wanna share with you today is the deep stuff. I wanna share with you the power of making an identity shift, the one concept that radically changed my life. This isn't about building or breaking habits that require a ton of willpower. Shifting your identity goes way deeper. Everything you want in life is really an identity shift boiled down. The money you wanna make, the relationship you want to be in or attract, the body you want. That's why I say it's the ultimate manifestation technique out there. Above all, it's just made me, I think, a happier person. When you're no longer chained to the old version of you, and the old habits that hold you back in life and self-sabotage, you're on your own team and it feels damn good. But first, let's give you some theory. We're gonna move through this really fast and then I'll tie it back to you with some examples so this will really click. Think of everything working in five circles with one being the most inner, two, three, four, and five being the most outer, deepest, to surface. Up top, you have actions. Any change usually starts here. You see bodybuilders on Instagram, you get really inspired, you go to the gym. You're a frustrated dude in his 20s, you get rejected by a girl, so it leads you to dating advice online, you take some action, you learn some lines. You see a kid talking about how Shopify made him bajillion dollars in 48 hours, and you take action and you start one. Nothing wrong with actions. They're just the most superficial layer, they're not the deepest. Let's keep going. The next layer is emo. Emotions. This is level four. Ultimately, the only reason you're taking actions is to win and get emotions. That's kind of the currency of the actions you take. What's the point of a hike? Is it to take the actions of getting up to the top of the mountain? What? For five minutes at the top where you're up there, you take off your backpack, you got a wet hoodie on, you're like, yep, this feels great. No, it's to change your emotional state of I did it. You use the pickup lines and you feel like they work better when you have conversations with women. You at least start a store and you feel like you're on the path to making your fortune. Which changes, level three, your beliefs? Wow, maybe it is possible for me to get my dream body and lose 20 pounds. Wow, maybe maybe I am really good at this pickup stuff. Wow, maybe it is possible for me to make a totally different income and quit my job. Which leads to different stories, level two. That business school teacher told me I was never gonna amount to nothing, they're wrong, I'ma show them. Max girlfriend who said I wasn't funny, this chick's laughing at my jokes. And if kept up long enough, this will influence your identity. That's the deepest layer, your self-image. I am the kind of person who can go up and talk to women. I am a fit person who health is a lifestyle. Look at my body, I got the results to prove it, I'm jacked. Does this make sense so far? Okay, this is, it starts with actions which influence your emotion, beliefs, stories, and ultimately what you want is at the core, becoming a new person. As James Clear says in his book so simply and brilliantly, the goal is not to go on a run, it's to become a runner. The goal in my case was not to stop smoking and reduce my little vape inhalations. No, it was to become someone who doesn't even touch it. And ultimately the goal of like learning all the lines to talk to women and stuff is not just to have the same conversation hundreds and hundreds and thousands and thousands of times, 
to find someone you really vibe with and you can commit yourself to. You got a good thing, you and them. The goal is not even to make $10,000 a month, it's to get to a point of where you're no longer stressed and worried about your finances. Now you know we're not just gonna leave you hanging here, we're gonna go deeper and elaborate. So how do most people go about change? The old way of change is going from the outside and working your way in. Now what's the problem here? Actions require a lot of willpower. You ever heard the stat that people start New Year's resolutions and 80% are off by the second week of February? What's also interesting here, and I know this working with lots of people in our coaching program, people who try this old way of just going from actions, sometimes they take actions and fail. And they have the belief of, oh, I've already tried that. I've tried manifestation, it just doesn't work for me, dude. You don't get it. I've tried tried the programs on how to pick up chicks and they just don't work. Which then this cycle goes deeper and actually works against you. It changes your emotions around the whole thing because you got PTDD, post-traumatic dating disorder. I've tried love, it doesn't work. They'll rip your heart out and spend everything on your credit card. Which changes your beliefs. You see this a lot in these communities of dudes who are super jaded about women. I don't know if it's just me, but every time I pull up my TikTok feed and go on there, it's just nonstop dating advice from men for women and from women for men. And that's just a lot of people who have beliefs beliefs and stories extrapolating from their past where they got jaded or they had one bad relationship and they assume that it's everyone. That'll eventually run your rampant into the identity of maybe it's me. This is my worldview. So what's the right way? Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna introduce you to the new way. This is going from the inside out. When I had the belief that I'm no longer someone who smokes, like disgusted by it, that changed my stories, beliefs, emotions, and the actions that followed, and I experienced a lasting, permanent shift. And look, in this video, hopefully you're getting that all lasting change that sticks in your life, when you trace it back to the core, it's because you changed something about your identity not just changing an action. This can work, but as we saw, it can be really slow. When you look at someone who loses 100 pounds, okay, that's a lot of weight, and they look back on old photos of themselves, what do they say? I'm so glad I did that one arm supination bicep concentration curl. No, they don't say that, do they? They say, holy cow, look at that photo. I'm no longer that person anymore. That's no longer me. In the case of guys in their 20s, who you know learn lines and they're in the dating sphere and they just learn, okay, how do I talk to girls? How do I talk to women? Which is a huge pain point, I get it. There's nothing wrong with like seeking out dating advice, of course. But if you just learn lines, even if they work and they start to work, this is a trap. You start getting attention using other people's lines and personalities. And even if you get the girl, get the date, they're with you, are they really with you or are they with the guy who taught you the lines that you're using and whose personality you adopted? And so what comes up for people, and I see this time and time again in our coaching program, we work with a lot of these, these guys who maybe they're out of a relationship because the woman left them when they weren't actually the person that they were attracted to at the beginning because deep down inside their core hasn't changed. If you fake it till you make it, all you're gonna get is a fake result and eventually the truth comes out, you can only hide it for so long. Versus the right way is when you actually become this level 10 version of yourself and you start shifting your identity towards the person you wanna be and you have that true charisma and true confidence, which can't be faked. You can sense authenticity. Our bullshit detectors are so like fine-tuned in, in this day and age. You know, we're seeing thousands and thousands of pieces of content. And when you operate from that frame where you're authentic, the people you attract are gonna be way cooler. You're gonna vibe better. That's the relationships you want. That's love 2.0 right there. And in our coaching program, what we do is it works very well for people in this dating and relationship field, which I didn't expect when I started launching it and working with people. The advice is simple. It's to stop trying to look for the right person. Where are they, where are they, where are they? And start trying to become the right person. When you level up to a 10, guess what shows up in your life? Tens because tens attract tens. And I'll just mean looks wise, I mean lifestyle wise, beliefs wise. And you can't experience that if you're just staying at the superficial layer of actions. If you're someone who feels stuck, like you're ready to reinvent yourself, maybe you're going through a transitory time, you wanna leave a job, find something that you love waking up to and do, we can help you. You wanna get in a new relationship, you wanna make your current one better, we can help you. Or you just love self-improvement advice, you're more of a seeker, you love these kinds of videos, but if you're like brutally honest, you might've had the same 
same goals on your vision board for like the last 12 months, we can totally help you too. I'll link down below where you can talk to my team. These are cool people trained personally by me. I train them every single day and they'll have a conversation with you and just see if we can like genuinely help. Because this process right here of the new to the not the old, this is exactly what we do in our metamorphic coaching program right here, where we start designing and creating the 2.0 version of you. And then we shift out and watch your actions change. Okay, we're not operating from force, we're operating from power. And once you do that, your whole life changes. This is, I mean, I've seen it time and time again with clients, flat out works. I've also seen it in my life personally. You know, this is how I have, you've seen this journey and you've seen this experience grow. If you go back to my old videos where I was in my mom's basement, what took me out of that was stepping into Clark 2.0. Okay, someone who is a YouTuber, even though it didn't have, I didn't have it yet, I had no reason to believe that. But then actions, your emotions, your beliefs and stories all conform to the identity you set. Because if there's one thing I know, it's this. Consistency is like the highest human driver. Human beings have a hardwired need to remain consistent with the identity you set. Tony Robbins calls this raising your standards, the three magic words. You wanna get your life back on track, you wanna get the next version of you this year, raise your standards. What he's really saying is create and shift into that 2.0 version of you. Shift your identity. That advice changed my life and it'll change yours. One note here I think will be really valuable is you might be asking, okay, well, okay, if I create the 2.0 me, then what? What blocks me? Just look at the chart. What's after identity when you have the 2.0 you? Your stories, aren't they? Because your stories influence your beliefs. I've told this story before, but it illustrates this really well. When I was 11 years old, where I got called up when I was in elementary school to do 11s on the board, and I didn't know the trick of like how to do 11s. I was the last one up there, the whole class was laughing. So for years, I carried around the story in my head, the belief that I wasn't good at math. I hated numbers. Numbers would come up in college, I'd freeze. I'd be like, ah, I can't do this, I'm not a numbers guy. Then flash forward, you know, a decade, I get into business, realize that I love numbers and I'm actually pretty good at them and they make sense, they're binary. They don't have any emotions to them. But when I trace it back, all because of that one story, that core story that I had blocked so much for me. So when you change your story, your beliefs and your emotions and your actions will change as well. So one thing we do in our coaching program is in week three, we developed a method to do this fast, like super rapidly. It's called inner shadow shifting and it pulls from NLP. But it's where you get to the root of where these stories are coming from and you're able to work through, process through and shift. We actually pair you up with a coach who's a beast at this. And in week three, some people say this is one of the most valuable parts. They literally feel like they're taking the weight off of them. When you're able to drop that core story that's blocking you, like you have the 2.0 you, you know where you wanna be, but there's a block here. And sometimes these are subconscious. So you're not even aware of your core story. The analogy I use is it's like if you fill a hot air balloon, there's only so much hot air you can fill into the balloon to get it to take off. That's what people are trying to do with their actions, with their emotions, with videos like this. But if you never address the sandbags that are keeping that thing on the ground, weighing it down, is it going anywhere? No, you have to release those to raise up. And that's why all the tactics of like raising your vibe and believing in yourself and affirmations, they, hey, they're good, they can help. But if you never heal that core story that's blocking you in the subconscious, you're kind of spinning your wheels, you know what I mean? Because we could easily do what other coaching programs do, which is, hey, here's a list of actions, why aren't you doing them, just do them, motivate yourself, willpower. But none of that matters if you have these core blocks that we're talking about, as you can see by this chart and this video. We could do a whole video on stories because they run deep, and let me know if you want a video on that. In doing a lot of this work myself and working with hundreds of clients, I find that humans, although we are individual, we all have our uniqueness, we have a lot of similar patterns. One of those is that you run on probably five core stories. Can be more, can be less, but like when you distill where they're all coming from, it's usually around five. These can come from past relationships, growing up, how you were raised, your parents, your teachers, your former self, 
If you never get to the root of your core stories, no matter what actions and habits you take, self-sabotage is gonna come up. That's why it's so important to heal those. So now you're probably thinking, well, how do I actually make that shift? Apply down below if you wanna talk to our team. But also, I'll link up right here a next follow-up video for this. It's on the same topic, shifting your identity, but it'll give you three core steps that you need to do. And it'll give you a lot more juice as well of like how to actually implement this now that you know all the theory behind it. Don't just sit on the sidelines, get in the game, go watch that video now, and I'll see you there.